What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the DS Asylum. I'm your Warder the Mitchell Strine, and today, Pokemon. The people actually watching this video, <laughs> we all love Pokemon. We all have our favorites. We all have our least favorites. We all have those Pokemon that we're indifferent towards, and we all have those Pokemon that, you know, we like a little bit, you know, we'll use them every now and then. And today, I figured, just because, why not? I list my top 10 favorite Pokemon, which has actually changed quite a bit since I played Pokemon Shield. And well, let's just get started. Number 10 is Onix. So I've always really liked Onix. The problem is it's, it's just so goddamn weak, man. Like it's got ridiculously high physical defense. In Generation 1, when it was introduced, it was the highest physical defense stat in the game. And in Gen 2, it was the second highest, second only to its own evolution in Steelix. And to this day, it's still probably in like the top 5, like top 10 at least, if not top 5, highest physical defense stats in the game. It's just, it's really tanky on the physical side. And early game, it's pretty fast. Because with base, I think, 70 speed, not many things in the early game are really going to outspeed it. But after you get about, like, a third of the way, I won't even say that, about two-fifths of the way into the game, it really stops being as good. Weirdly enough, by the time you can actually catch an Onyx in a Kanto game, it's already started to lose a lot of its value. Because by that point, most things can outspeed an Oko it with a decent special move. Ugh. It's, it's so weak. And the reason why it's weak is because it was Brock's signature Pokemon. It was his ace. And unfortunately, he was the first gym leader. So I feel like if Onyx either wasn't Brock's ace or if Brock would got to be one of the later gym leaders, Onyx probably could have been a lot stronger and... I'd probably love it even more, but this Titan Aboa made of rocks will always be in my top 10, even if it is at the bottom. Coming in at number nine is actually a tie, a two-way tie between two evolutions, Jolteon and Umbreon, which is pretty funny because I'm sure if you asked anybody who their or what their favorite evolution was they would probably say Jolteon or Umbreon and here I am saying that both of them are my favorite evolutions. <sighs> I never said I wasn't a basic bitch but either way Jolteon and Umbreon are really freaking cool. Umbreon is a very good special tank and Jolteon is just a fast electric type, like dog, whatever these things. Are. What the hell is Eevee and its Eevee Lucians? Are they dogs? What, what the hell even are they actually? I've never taken the time to actually look at what the hell these things are. What are the Eevee Lucians anyway? Either way. They look cool, they are really good in playthroughs, and if you've never used a Jolteon or Umbreon, I highly recommend you try it, because they're a lot of fun. Coming in at number eight is Scizor. Scizor is just really cool, and you're probably gonna hear me say that a few more times in this video, but I mean, who doesn't like Scizor? It's a giant metal bug. What? And hell, I believe it's Isle of Armor Dex entry even says that its muscles are made of steel or metal or something. Like what? <laughs> it can crush boulders in its pincers. And yeah, it's not very fast, but really your only hope of not being killed by one of these things is to outrun it because if it gets its pincers on you, you're screwed. Uh, Scizor is very cool and very deserving of being in a lot of people's top 10s. Up next is Mega Mawile. Now, I say Mega Mawile because normal Mawile, while I do like it, wouldn't exactly make my top 10. The reason why it's Mega Evolution makes my top 10 is because I love the idea of taking this really cool designed Pokemon that just is unfortunately extremely weak, 
and giving it this super powerful evolution that, yes, is not a permanent evolution. Mawile could probably do with having a permanent evolution. And honestly, I think it's Mega should just be a permanent evolution for it with obviously lower stats. But I, I re I've always liked Mawile. And the fact that Mega Mawile exists makes me like it even more. Putting Essentially putting Mawile into the top 10. But it's specifically the Mega form because of how much of a goddamn threat it was back in Gen 6. And up next, we have Al Creamy. Yes, Al Creamy. The Pokemon with about 5,000 different forms. But when I first actually got an Al Creamy, I started using it. Then I realized I actually really like this Pokemon. And then as I was using it more, going into Pokemon camp and stuff, I realized that this is the most adorable thing in the world and I love it. It is one of my new favorite things. And this is a precious, this is a precious gift that I must protect at all costs. So I don't give a, f I don't give a f if Al Creamy is just a sentient whipped cream. I don't care. It is actually really good and it is adorable. So yes, Al Creamy makes the top 10 fight me. Coming up next is Aegislash, Aegislash, Aegislash? How the hell do you say that? Either way, Aegislash is, that was, a, that was another way of saying it, Aegislash has really grown on me. I've, I've always liked Aegislash, but I never actually got to use one until my Pokemon Shield playthrough. And oh my God, I love this Pokemon. Like it's just, it's got such a cool mechanic of being hyper defensive when it's in its shield form and then being hyper offensive in its blade form and in like a real life kind of scenario, that'd be really cool. And King Shield being absolutely busted is really cool as well. And the idea of it not just getting certain stat buffs in the different forms, but instead it's OP uh, defensive stats switching with its offensive stats in its blade form and then vice versa back into the shield form is really cool. And there was actually a point in time when I thought Aegislash was a pseudo legendary. Like genuinely, I thought it was a pseudo legendary until I actually saw its base stat total because I was like, how is a Pokemon so creative and actually so powerful? Not a pseudo legend. It's not apparently. I, I was just stupid. It's not a pseudo legendary, but it could have been one. Like genuinely, it could have been one and it's so much fun to use. And the ghost steel typing is such good defensive typing and offensive, truthfully, especially with Fairy being the best type in the game. So Aegislash will probably always have a spot on my top 10, even if it does go down eventually, because, you know, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are coming out this year. And I don't think Aegislash is gonna be in that game. Coming up next is Cinderace. So we have the second uh, Galar Pokemon on the list, and it's the first starter. It's also the only starter on the list. Um, Charizard had always been my favorite fire starter, and honestly, my favorite starter Pokemon for very a, a very long time. Cannot speak a very long time, but Cinderace honestly just like kind of breaks Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like, there is one issue with Cinderace, and that's if you pick Cinderace, Sword and Shield becomes 10 times easier. Because Cinderace is disrespectfully broken, and it's so ridiculously fast, hits so hard, Pyro Ball should not exist in the way it does because of how strong it is. If it was 100% accurate, it would probably be the best non-legendary signature move. And honestly, after using it throughout my entire Shield playthrough and still playing it to this day, it was the first of my Pokemon in Pokemon Shield to hit level 100. This thing is adorable and I love it. This soccer playing rabbit is again, one of my favorite things. All right, coming up next, we have the boy Machamp. So 
Machamp has always been one of my favorite Pokemon. It, when I was a kid, before I ever played Emerald, it was my favorite Pokemon. And that's simply because I've always liked the fighting type. And one of my favorite shows as a kid was Ben 10, and it reminded me of Forearms. All right, get, get off my back. Shut up. But seriously, the fighting type has always been one of my favorite types, and Machamp is literally the poster boy for fighting type Pokemon. So, obviously I'm gonna like it, and there's a lot of Kanto-related nostalgia attached to it. Next, we have Staraptor. Staraptor is great. Obviously, a Sinnoh Pokemon was gonna end up on this list. Sinnoh is, is one of my favorite games. So, I mean, it was only a matter of time before a Sinnoh Pokemon ended up on this list. And I gotta say, Staraptor's probably the best regional bird there is. Like, it's got pretty good type coverage. It hits like a goddamn truck and is one of the fastest regional birds at that. It's just an absolute monster. And the only reason you have to not be using a Staraptor on a Sinnoh playthrough is if you've already used one and you're trying to change it up. Like, th that's literally it. When the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl uh, games come out, you can bet your ass Staraptor will be on my team. And finally, number one, we have... Uh... <sighs> Alright. My favorite Pokemon of all time, of all the Pokemon is Gardevoir. And the reason why I say it the way that I'm saying it is because Gardevoir has been done so freaking dirty, quite literally. Gardevoir has been the subject of a lot of very disgusting fan fiction and fan arts and people always trying to do things with it. Oh. It really makes it hard to have Gardevoir as your favorite Pokemon, you know, publicly when Gardevoir is essentially what started Rule 34. But Gardevoir is my favorite Pokemon simply because, at least for me, no matter what game I play, no matter when it goes on my team, no matter how long it's on my team, it is always one of the most consistently reliable Pokemon that I use. Now, yes, it's no OP Pokemon. This is gonna win every every battle you put in, you put it in. Again, English is very hard. It's not gonna win every single battle you put it in, but it is one of the most consistently reliable Pokemon out there. Being a psychic fairy type is great typing. Again, the fairy type is uber tier busted. It cannot be touched by dragon types that can hit them back with super effective damage. The psychic type has always been extremely powerful. And I mean, look at this picture, this screenshot that I managed to get from my Pokemon Shield game. I mean, look at that. That is adorable. All right. That is adorable. I love it. Gardevoir is my favorite Pokemon of all time, and I don't feel bad about it. You know what? You can have all your disgusting fan fiction. I will stick to using my Gari on my playthrough teams, all right? And you can bet your ass that a Gardevoir will also be on my Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl team, because duh. But those are my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time. Currently, anyway, let me know what your top like three Pokemon are because if I'm reading a bunch of top 10 comments, I'm gonna lose my mind. So, <laughs> if you want to tell me your top 10, tell me a top 10. Like, I, I don't care how long your comment is. Let me know what your favorite Pokemon are in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see some more Pokemon related content, do make sure to hit that like button. It really does help me out and show me that you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff. And if you enjoyed the video as a whole, again, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that join button if you can. It really does help the channel out. All the links you could ever want are in the description down below. And I will see all of you inmates back here at the Asylum for the next video. Peace.